Taylor Swift's relationship with football player Travis Kelsey has brought the NFL an over $330 million boost in revenue. When you see numbers like that, it makes sense why ESPN talks about her more than the players right now. I mean, Taylor Swift. <laughs> I mean, Taylor Swift got it going on. She's also brought in a large amount of money for herself since 2023. Her Eras tour brought in over a billion dollars and has made her a billionaire herself. Now there's a few billionaire artists, but what makes her different is that she's one of the few to do it almost purely from her music career and not with outside businesses. All of this just confirms what we already know, that Taylor Swift is insanely popular. But beyond this, at this point, she is basically an economic force. In a recent poll, we found that a large percentage of Americans would support whatever presidential candidate that she supported with little thought about it. This is a level of power that we're not used to seeing in artists, and it might be safe to say that she has the most valuable personal brand on earth right now. And it's my belief that you don't get to this level of wealth and power on accident. Taylor is very calculated, and she did this all with a calculated strategy. And honestly, I feel like for all of the wealth and power that she has, she's not talked about enough amongst entrepreneurs. But what I want to figure out is what makes Taylor such an attractive figure to so many people and what we can learn from her and her marketing strategies. So without further ado, let's get into Taylor Swift and her billion dollar personal brand. Let's get into it. Chapter one, the all American girl. A large part of Taylor's success comes from the perception that people have of her as a person. And her brand boils down to that all-American girl who's super relatable. Some of this is curated and some of it is just in her DNA. Being a blonde-haired, blue-eyed white girl makes her look the part of the all-American girl to most Americans and even most of those outside of America. It's what they think of when they think of that all-American country girl. Also, I feel like I've said all-American like 30 times, so I apologize for that. And it seems she understands this about herself and protects that brand very carefully. She's been able to avoid any major controversies on her part, and for most of her career, she's kept her music pretty clean and safe to listen to for all demographics. But there's a lot of other artists that do these things as well, and none of them have the same personal brand that Taylor Swift does. So what is it that makes her stand apart from them? I believe that the real value in her brand and what really makes people connect with her is that she embodies an ideal in the general public's mind. The most successful brands to ever exist are able to establish a reputation so large that they almost have a monopoly of a word or idea in your mind. When you think of animation, it doesn't take long before Disney also pops up in your head. Or when you think of basketball, it's inevitable that Michael Jordan comes up. The power in this is that they transcend their industry and becomes a representation of their industry as a whole. Even people who never watch basketball know who Michael Jordan is. Taylor Swift was able to do this for country music and even further with pop music as a whole. People outside of America associate her with the all-American spirit in music. And when you're able to do that for the most popular genre of music in the world, you're bound to build an empire. What all creators need to understand is that people consume media largely based on what consuming that media says about them as a person. And being a Taylor Swift fan simultaneously conveys a lot and not much at all. You're probably a romantic, have been through a tough breakup, or have traditional tastes. Or maybe you're just a teenager. These are all very common traits and it makes her like the Coca-Cola of music. It may not be everyone's favorite, but no one looks at you weird for liking it. Chapter two. A killer attitude. Wouldn't it be funny if he's got like Taylor Swift in his car? I do. Really? Yeah, I do. I do. I think it's important to listen to people who do great things. Like, I don't care if you like her music or if you don't like her music. Look at what she's a, what she's doing. You can't have that level of consistent success and not be a killer. It's impossible. Taylor Swift has a great image and seems like a very kind woman to her fans. But I also don't believe you can get to this level of success without having the mind of a killer. No, I don't mean that Taylor Swift is literally a murderer, but what I mean is that she has a killer mindset, a mindset that means that she is going to get something done no matter what stands in her way. She is very resilient, driven, and at times ruthless when she needs to be in order to get exactly what she wants for her business, brand, or career. 
There have been numerous times in her career where she's blasted through the obstacles in front of her and accomplished things that would stop most people. In June of 2019, Scooter Braun purchased the rights to Taylor's discography for over $300 million. This was one of the few times where the world saw Taylor get very upset publicly and she denounced Scooter for his actions. But then she did something that most artists would never do. She set about re-recording her entire discography so that she could own the rights to it completely. There's a lot of artists that never get the rights to their own music, but very few would go to these lengths to regain control of their discography. She did something similar with her film from her tour. During the SAG strike, she was given special permissions to release the film due to there being no paid actors or writers for the film. She also released the film independently and made a deal directly with the movie theaters much to the anger of the big film studios who would have liked to release it themselves. She did this so that she could have full control and release it on her schedule rather than that of the studio executives and it worked out great. The film grossed $26 million in just 24 hours and was released while she was still on tour to build hype around both the live show and the film. These are the actions of someone who utterly rejects failure and will go as far as they possibly can, breaking through all conventional barriers to achieve what they want. In other words, this is the actions of a killer. People like Kobe Bryant and Christopher Nolan have complimented Taylor's attitude for a reason. Because despite her calm attitude, she has an extremely driven mindset similar to themselves. Taylor is someone that you don't want to bet against because she will do whatever she needs to to get what she wants. And I say this often to creators, you don't have to be mean, but you do have to have that killer mindset if you want to succeed on the highest level in your business. The reason Taylor is so successful is because even at her level, she's working harder than those that are under her. And that's really hard to beat when someone has more resources than you and is working harder than you. How can you beat that? Chapter three, a parasocial connection with her fans. In today's world, where worldwide connection is easier than ever, most artists need to use social media to connect with their fans. Taylor is no different, but she does stand out as someone who does it so well that her fans really feel like they know her. This is called having a parasocial relationship, which means that one person is extremely invested in the relationship while the other is completely unaware of that person. Now, generally, this is an unhealthy relationship and most celebrities try to avoid this, but most of Taylor's fans simply skirt this line without completely crossing it. However, it's still very risky. With her music being so personal, it makes sense that her fans feel like they really know her. And she uses social media to enhance that by responding directly to fans and even going to more personal measures than that. In one case, she invited her fans to her home, baked them cookies, and let them hear her album early before its release. Okay, this level of interaction with your fans is actually pretty insane, but it's also kind of genius. Only a small group of fans got the opportunity to do this with Taylor, but it affects every fan that she has. It makes them all believe that they could one day be plucked out of her millions of fans to come to her house or hang out with her. And that simple belief makes you more devoted and feel closer to her because of the perceived access you have to her. Most artists reject the idea of parasocial relationships because they realize how dangerous it can be. In the past, it's led to stalking or robberies or even worse than that in some cases. And cases like this have even happened to Taylor herself. In fact, they just arrested a stalker at her home. But while this can be a dangerous strategy, it seems like Taylor is willing to take that risk and largely, it seems like it's paid off for her. Even people with cult fan bases like Rihanna and Beyonce are less likely to have fans with the level of obsession that Taylor's have. And that's by design. Most people don't want that level of obsession because it's insane. But Taylor seems to welcome it, or at least she welcomes it more than most celebrities do. And because of that, she's built a fan base that's so loyal, they'll change their politics for her. It's a very difficult trade-off to make, but if you're willing to deal with the hassle and danger that might come from this, it could benefit you greatly. Chapter four, the power of compounding interest. Once Taylor reached a certain level of fame, things started to compound for her to get even more and more fame and money as she got more and more fame and money. The old maxim is true. The rich really do get richer, but understanding why is what's really important here. As a brand or artist achieves more success, they have more resources to improve their service. And as they improve their service, there becomes less reasons to engage with the competition. Think of Amazon. They have so much money that they can provide a service that's far above the competition. Plus, as more people use the service, the more compelling it is to use it as well, 
you already know you can find some of your favorite products on Amazon. And you can share an Amazon link with almost anyone and chances are they'll understand what that means. And this same thing happens with music as well as an artist gets bigger. For most artists, their main source of income is from touring, which means that basically they're running an event business. So when you go to a concert, you're more likely to go if you have a friend that's going. And that friend is more likely to go if they know the artist's music. As Taylor Swift's fame grows, it's far easier to convince a friend to go see Taylor Swift with you because almost everyone knows some songs by her. And she's built up enough trust that you know the show will at the very least be entertaining. This is what happened with her last tour, the Eras Tour. I actually had a few friends that ended up going to her tour and they weren't even huge Swifties. They just went because their friends were going and they saw the videos online and they knew it was cool. And I also had friends that went because their girlfriends were going and if they didn't go, they were going to probably get in a lot of trouble with their girlfriends. But there are very few artists with the resources to put on a show like Taylor Swift does, which means that going to one of her concerts concerts is potentially a once in a lifetime experience. But this compounding interest also works in her favor when working with other brands. Big brands understand Taylor's influence and they will use her name and face to boost their own. Just like the NFL, they benefit heavily by showing Taylor Swift in their games. But she also benefits by expanding her brand even further to a new demographic. Of course, football fans already know who Taylor Swift is, but now they are more invested in her because she's associated with something they love. Now this level of compounding interest is not relevant to most creators because most of us don't have billions of dollars or have the level of fame that anyone in the world would know who we are no matter where we are. But I do believe that a lot of creators can still do this on a small scale. As you grow your brand or your business, reinvest what you get back into your content or your service in order to make it something that is way harder to compete with. It won't necessarily give you the Taylor Swift effect, but it will elevate you to a level that a lot of smaller creators won't be able to completely copy. And this is exactly what Mr. Beast is doing when he shreds a Lamborghini or pays someone like three million bucks or something. Mr. Beast's strategy inevitably works, but who else can really do this? Very few people. So he keeps compounding that interest, making his content harder and harder to compete with and making it better and better until it's something that you can only get from Mr. Beast. And you don't have to just do this with money. Other creators reinvest in their skills or in their personality or anything else that is very hard to compete with. Whatever it is that makes your content your content, make it more you by reinvesting more into it. So looking back at Taylor's career, I can clearly see how she amassed such a great fortune. I'll be honest, when I first started doing this video, I didn't know much about Taylor Swift and I'm not a huge fan of her, but doing this gave me a different level of respect for at least the way that she runs her business and her marketing. I think the biggest lesson I learned here was just how far she will go to protect and enhance her brand. To me, it almost feels obsessive the length she'll go to protect her brand and how far she will go to have control over her entire empire and everything that she does. And I don't say that in a bad way. In my opinion, a healthy obsession over your art is a good thing. If you're doing something that you deem as important, you should be obsessed with it. With Taylor, she has the self-awareness to realize the position she's in, and she understands how people view her and she understands the immense power she has because of that. But what makes her so interesting is that she knows how to use that power while still seeming like that humble country girl. When your personal brand reaches the same level of giant corporations, it can be tough to maintain it because ultimately, you're just a human, not a conglomerate with tons of executives. So shout out to her for growing and maintaining a personal brand for so long that's this large. Honestly, it's pretty impressive and I wanna see exactly where she goes from here. And even though I'm not a huge fan of her and you might not be a fan of her, I think it would be stupid to ignore what she's doing as an entrepreneur. Anyways, hope you learned something. Keep creating, keep doing your thing. I'll see you next time. Peace.